so firstly, I would, not, I would like to thank the organizers for allowing me to present this uh, joint work with uh, uh, my PhD student uh, Vasilis Apidopoulos uh, and my colleagues uh, Jean-François Ojol and Audre Pierre on the exact race, rate of the uh, Nesterov acceleration scheme. Uh, so first of all, the general setting. Uh, we will consider F, a convex function from uh, Rn to R, uh, which gradient is uh, L Lipschitz and having uh, at least one minimizer, which we will denote uh, X star, and we want to build uh, a sequence to approximate uh, X star. Uh, a cl classical way to, uh, to build such a sequence is a classical gradient descent uh, with a constant step. So if the step is uh, small enough, uh, you can uh, ensure that the sequence Xn converges to uh, a minimizer X star, and you have a decay, a bound on the decay of F of xn minus f of x star, which is uh, a big O of uh, 1 over n, depending uh, also on the <coughs> L1, L2 norm of uh, x0 minus x star and on the step size uh, h. Uh, in 1984, uh, Yuri Nesterov proposed uh, an acceleration scheme. Uh, it's a, a variant of the uh, gradient descent, uh, and in, in this scheme, uh, the point x n plus 1 is computed by a gradient descent, but not on the point x n, like in gradient, classical gradient descent, but on a point y n, that what is, uh, which is uh, very close to the point x n, but you, when we, uh, <coughs> we, we add uh, um, an initial uh, term, uh, n over n plus alpha x minus uh, x minus one, uh, and with this uh, slightly uh, <coughs> weak uh, modification uh, of the algorithm, we can uh, achieve a rate that is uh, one over uh, n square. Uh, to be precise, in this uh, seminal work, uh, Nesterov proposed uh, the choice uh, alpha equals root three, which minimizes the constant hidden in the big O. Uh, but the, all the analysis applied for uh, any alpha bigger than 3. And <coughs> the, the choice alpha equals 3 was uh, used for 30 years, uh, especially for uh, any uh, extension of this algorithm, such as FISTA, uh, which is an extension proposed by Beck and Teboul uh, in uh, 2009 uh, to uh, composite uh, functions, uh, which are the sum of a convex function uh, small f, which has a gradient Lipschitz, and uh, a function j that uh, have a, a proximal operator that can be uh, computed. <coughs> so here is a, an example of an example of uh, the use of this algorithm, or it's uh, it's a use of uh, uh, FISTA for deconvolution. So here on the top left, you have uh, a blurred image. Uh, and you want to uh, remove this blur, minimiz minimizing a function that is a sum of two functions. One is uh, differentiable with gradient Lipschitz, and the second one is a, a regularization term, which is uh, proportional to your the L1 norm of your favorite uh, wavelet transform, for example. And <coughs> on the top right uh, here, you can see the two curves. It is the decay of uh, ISTA, or forward backward. Uh, that is a generalization to a composite function of gradient descent, and uh, the red curve corresponds to the decay of uh, FISTA, which is the extension of uh, Nesterov to composite optimization. Uh, and on the bottom left, you can see after uh, 300 iterations uh, the result of ISTA, and on bottom right, uh, with uh, the same uh, number of iterations, re the result of uh, FISTA, and you can see that the, the result is, um, is better for, for FISTA, and the decay seems to be uh, better. And that is why uh, this uh, Nesterov scheme is uh, widely used in uh, image processing, because in many situations, uh, there are an effective uh, gain for uh, the decay of the functional. And it's in, uh, in many situations really an acceleration of um, the gradient descent scheme. So the, case, the question we 
want to deal with uh, today is can we be more precise uh, than uh, 1 over n square uh, if we have more information on f. So Nestor proved that if you only suppose that your function is convex, uh, you, can do, you can't do better than 1 over n square. Uh, but uh, we know uh, that with more information of f, strong convexity for example, you can achieve better rates. Uh, and another point is, is Nestor really an acceleration of the gradient descent? Uh, because we know that when the function is strongly convex, you can, gain, you can get a, um, geometric decay using gradient descent, and we will see that it's not the case. We only have polynomial decay for um, the Nestor scheme I, I, I give, uh, I, I speak with, uh, about in this talk. Um, so the answers are yes, if you have strong convexity, uh, you can do better than 1 over n square, you can be more precise, uh, but we will deal with more general uh, uh, assumptions in this talk. Um, because uh, if you suppose that your function is uh, strongly convex, uh, you can say that it's, uh, uh, it's like a bit, uh, your function is uh, uh, lower bounded by uh, some quadratic functions, and we will see that we will propose more general uh, hypotheses on the geometry of the function around the set of minimizers. Um, <clears throat> we will see that in many problems, numerical problems, this stuff is more efficient, but uh, not always. And uh, the final answer will be, uh, uh, from a synthetical point of view, uh, Nestor may be better than, more efficient than gradient descent, or maybe not. It will depend really on the geometry. So the outline of, me, of my talk uh, will be the, the following. First of all, I will uh, describe two definitions. I will give you two definitions of uh, geometry, one flatness condition and one growth condition. Uh, then I will recall some classical results about gradient descent. I will give you uh, some state-of-the-art results on the Nestor of schemes. And I will give you then these new rates uh, we achieve uh, in, this, uh, in this work. Uh, I will explain then uh, how we can uh, handle these rates uh, using uh, an, ODO, uh, an OD uh, study. Uh, so the first condition uh, I, will, uh, I will use is the definition of, uh, uh, it's a flatness property. We will say that F satisfies the condition H of gamma. Uh, if for all uh, X star in the set of minimizer uh, X star, uh, we have this, uh, this inequality. Uh, roughly speaking, it means that the function um, grows not too fast uh, around the set of minimizers. So if the function um, uh, satisfy h of gamma, uh, the function do, does not grow uh, faster than x to the power uh, x to the power gamma. You can see that you can see that condition as a flatness condition. The function is more flat than x to the power gamma around the set uh, of minimizers. And the second property. Uh, is uh, uh, the condition L of gamma, and we will say that uh, F satisfies L of gamma if uh, the function is bounded, uh, lower bounded in this, uh, near the set of uh, minimizers by the function by the distance uh, of, um, between x and the set of minimizers to the power of gamma. Uh, this condition uh, ensures that the, the, the function grows sufficiently fast. Uh, uh, at least faster than x to the power gamma around the set uh, of minimizers. Uh, we call this, uh, we use this letter L because it, this condition is equivalent for the, in the convex setting with some uh, Lojasevich uh, property. And if you consider the specific choice of function f of x, which is uh, the uh, norm of x minus x star uh, to the power r, with r uh, greater than 1, uh, f satisfy uh, this flatness condition for any gamma uh, in uh, uh, smaller than r, and uh, satisfy the condition L of p for any p greater than gamma. And we will see that if f uh, has a gradient Lipschitz and satisfies L2, 
uh, it will also satisfy the condition H for any parameter, for a, a parameter gamma uh, strictly uh, greater than one. And we'll see that have some impact on the decay uh, in the following theorems. Okay, so I give you uh, some example here. It's uh, the function x square. So the function x square uh, grows at least at, like uh, x square. Okay, so it satisfies h of two and l of two. Uh, and uh, if I change it, okay, uh, if I consider the function x to the power of three, it satisfies uh, h of uh, h of r for r smaller than three and l of uh, l of q for q. Uh, greater than three. And the point is, uh, it does not depend on the uniqueness of the minimizer. If I had a, uh, a set of minimizers that is non reduced to a single point, it doesn't change these two, uh, these two properties. Okay? The growth and the uh, um, supposed on the, on, the, um, on the border of the uh, of the minimization uh, of the minimizers. Uh, you, don't, you don't assume, we don't assume that there's only one minimizer. For example, if you consider this function, uh, it's not so flat, so it's, it uh, satisfies the condition h of one, that's it, uh, but it satisfies the condition l of q for any q uh, greater than one. Yeah, it's, it's, the function grows very fast uh, around the set of minimizer. Okay? So, um, if you consider these two definitions, and uh, you can observe that the function f in 1D, uh, uh, absolute value of x to the power of p, satisfy the three properties, that's, that is satisfy h of p, l of p, and as a unique minimizer. And we will provide some theorems that gives the, the decay rate of the Nesteros scheme depending on these three conditions. So I will try to, uh, we will try to find some uh, decay rate depending on these conditions, and we want that these rates are rich, really rich in practice for, that, uh, for this, this function x to the power of p. To ensure that these rates, the, the rates we propose, are optimal. You can do better um, uh, with another analysis. Okay, so I will just recall some results on the classical gradient uh, descent scheme. So if you consider the, the, the simple, the classical gradient descent, and you suppose that your function satisfy L of gamma, the, uh, this uh, growth condition, uh, you, uh, uh, the decay of uh, F of Xn minus F of X star is uh, a big O of N to the power N over alpha divided by alpha minus two, when alpha is greater than two. And if you consider uh, um, if your function satisfies the condition L of two, that is, grows uh, mostly uh, faster than a quadratic function around the set of minimizers, then the decay of the functional is exponential, at least exponential. Okay, so that's it, that, that is the case for grad, grad is faster descent. No. Okay, in all my talk, yeah, that's a good question. In all my talk, I will consider, I will consider this, this scheme, okay? Okay, okay I, will, I will try to minimize my function f with uh, this, uh, this, uh, this scheme where, the place where I compute the gradient is not exactly at point xn, but at this point here. It seems, yeah, if, if you look at that, uh, uh, oh. You're right, yeah, <laughs> you're right, uh, you're right, it's a gamma, uh, it, because there's no nester of here, okay, okay, so in all my talk, alpha will denote the parameter of nester of, there's, there's no nester of here, so it's, it's, it's gamma, okay, you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, when the function is, uh, grows, uh, is quite flat, when you, you have an hypothesis of h of gamma with gamma greater than two, the decay is polynomial and the, po the power is gamma n1 over n to the power gamma minus uh, over gamma minus two. Okay, you're right. And uh, if your function grows faster than um, uh, x square, 
the decay is exponential. Okay, you can summarize it on this uh, on this graphic uh, here. You have a p uh, on the axis and the rate uh, here. Um, you can see that uh, for uh, uh, for p going to infinity, your, the rate goes to one. Okay, and when the p goes to two, the rate explodes. Yeah, it's polynomial. And when p is smaller than two, it's not even polynomial; it's uh, geometric. Okay, so that is for gradient descent. Okay. So now uh, I go back to uh, the Nesterov scheme. So here, my uh, uh, my scheme, I recall it, uh, and my parameter alpha will be always the same. So it seems quite strange that such a, a small parameter here will, be, will have a, such an influence on the decay, but we will see that there's really a real influence of the, this parameter for the decay of the function. So um, Nesterov proves that if alpha is greater than 3, the decay is at least 1 over n squared. Um, and uh, a few years ago uh, with Antonin, uh, we proved that uh, uh, for alpha strictly uh, uh, greater than 3, you have also uh, convergence of the iterates, and uh, Atouche and Pepuke also uh, saw that you not only have a big O of 1 over n squared, but it's uh, actually a small O. Okay? And um, uh, two years later, uh, in uh, two different papers, uh, me and my co authors and uh, Atouche uh, and uh, co authors proved that the decay for alpha. Uh, smaller than 3, which we call a subcritical case, uh, the decay is not 1 over n squared, but 1 over 2 alpha over 3. Okay? I can summarize it in, a, uh, in this uh, graphic. So here you have the rate depending for uh, any function, any convex function, depending on alpha. Okay? The point, the small point, uh, green, is Nesterov. Uh, Nesterov theorem says it's you, if you choose alpha equal to 3, you are Oh, you are sure to get a uh, decay that is uh, higher than 2. Okay? And uh, we can observe that if you choose uh, alpha greater than 3, you also have this decay, at least 2. But if you choose alpha smaller than 3, uh, the decay is not unsure to be 2. Uh, you can have uh, something, uh, something smaller. Ah. The point is, uh, if you have uh, other assumptions on your, fu on your function, uh, you can do better. And uh, uh, Suboid and Candes and Atouche and Pepuke prove that actually if the function is somehow strongly convex, uh, satisfies the condition L of 2 and as a unique minimizer, um, you also have, you, you have this decay n over uh, 1 over n to the power 2 alpha over 3 uh, for any alpha, any positive alpha. You can take alpha equal, equal to uh, 10, 20, 100, but whatever you want, this, the decay will uh, grow up with alpha. Okay, so uh, on bl in blue, in the blue dot line, you have the, the, the classical rate you can achieve for any convex function, and for for strongly convex function, this decay goes to infinity. Uh, this polynomial decay goes to infinity when the function when the, the function is uh, a strongly convex. Okay, so uh, just show you. Uh, it's quite small on my screen. So here you have two, uh, uh, two, two graphics. The first uh, is uh, the rate uh, depending on alpha and p. So, and the second is a, a slice. Uh, it's, it's a slice of the first graphic. So if you consider uh, a slice, uh, for example, choose, let's choose p equal to uh, 5 here. It's your function behaves like uh, x to the power of 5. Uh, this theorem tells you you don't have, your function is not strongly convex. So if it's not strongly convex, you have this rate. The rate depends on alpha. You have 2 alpha over 3 before 3, and after 3 you have at least uh, the, a square, uh, a rate that is equal to 2. But if your function has a strong minimizer, that the, the function behaves like uh, uh, x to the power p when, uh, with p between 1 and 2, in this case, you have a strong minimizer, and then the decay will grow faster. Okay, and if you take large alpha, you can have a large decay. 
Okay, so I try to represent this decay okay, in 3D. Okay, so here you have the, the value of the rate depending on the value of alpha and the value of p. You have alpha here, so the, I don't know if you can do, yeah, it's quite dark, okay. Uh, the surface here, okay, yeah, on the right, you have, uh, on the right, you have uh, p equal between one and two, and you have a, a, a linear function, uh, two alpha over three, and uh, on the left, you have the big, the, the, the values that are greater than, greater than two. And for uh, p greater than two, you don't have any uh, strong convexity. And if you don't have any strong convexity, the maximum you can achieve is two alpha over three only for alpha smaller than three. And you have two for uh, greater values, greater values of uh, alpha. Okay, so uh, we can do some numerical experiments, for example. And to compute the exact value. Yeah. Let's take, for example, uh, I will take from my first experiments, uh, p equal to two, so the function x squared, and I will choose alpha equal to two. I try to minimize this function, and on the, uh, on the bottom left, you can see the trajectory of uh, the iterates. Uh, it goes to the minimum, okay? And on the um, graphic on the right, the, you have the, uh, the energy of the point, and you have the decay of the energy. Uh, uh, it decays, it's quite hard to, to see how fast is the decay, what is the, the power, it's a, mani it's a polynomial, but what is uh, the exact value? It's one over n, one over n squared, one over n r to the power three, and to, to show you that it's one over n squared, I multiply the amplitude of the trajectory by n squared. Here and if you multiply by n square, you see how it's bounded. Okay, that means that if you choose, if you consider the function x to the power uh, two, and you use alpha equal to two, the, the decay is one over n square. Okay, if you consider uh, for the same function but you choose alpha equal to one, the rate is one because I, if I multiply the amplitude by n, I have a bounded function. Okay. And you can do it, yeah, for any function. Yeah, I have a third example here. For example, it's x to the power of three, and, and choose alpha equal to one, and you, your trajectory decays like one over n to the power six over five. Yeah, it seems quite strange, but the point is, uh, it's, it's really this power that, uh, that you, you can recover when you want to, to do some, uh, some experiments. And uh, the point is, what is the, uh, uh, the, phase, the phase map of the real decay rate. And the real decay rate is something like that. You know? So here, I, uh, this surface represents the decay rate depending of P and alpha on blue, in blue. It's the actual decay, the real decay, okay? And uh, uh, here, just, you have the, the uh, in red, do you see the other surface in red? In, uh, yeah, it's quite dark, okay, yeah. It's the, 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 the results, the, the rate you can achieve with, pre, with previous theorems, okay? And the reality is the, the blue one, okay. So the point is, uh, it's quite strange, huh? you see, uh, for, uh, for p equal to one, you have a, a linear function here, and uh, for p equal to two, you also have a linear function, and for large p, you have a, a piecewise linear, a piecewise affine, uh, function, okay, but the point is uh, it's uh, better than two, okay, you know this uh, here, if you compute the rate, it's uh, greater than two for any p. So the, the, our goal was to provide some theorems that, that can't recover this exact rate, to know, to be able to prove that uh, uh, the rate are the, the actual one. So, uh, yeah, if I uh, I didn't uh, train enough uh, to uh, this 3D representation, but here it's a 2D representation. Uh, you have alpha, uh, alpha and p, and the color it represents uh, the rate. 
Yeah. Uh, so for uh, the, the yellow is high rate and the dark is uh, a small rate. Okay? And we will, prov we will uh, give you three theorems uh, which gave the exact rate of the Nesterov acceleration in these uh, three uh, uh, spaces of the phase map. And you have uh, a, red, uh, a red part where we know what uh, the rate is. We have a formula, but we don't have any proof. Okay, so there's a miss. Maybe uh, someone may have an idea. So, okay, and uh, yeah, you have the same. Uh, I took the, the same surface, and uh, each color corresponds to uh, a theorem. Okay, so the red here, the, um, the green part is a small value of alpha. Okay, the uh, orange part is uh, a small value of p, which corresponds to strong convexity. Okay, and the blue, the blue part corresponds to a high value of p. Oop. Okay, here, the high value of p, uh, and uh, that is for flat functions. Okay, so orange is a strong convex, strong convex function, strong convexity. Uh, blue, um, uh, flat functions, and green is uh, the small, small values of alpha. Okay, and the limit between uh, uh, the limit of the green part is the rate 2. It means that uh, for uh, when you uh, are in this green part, uh, you have a, a, a decay that is smaller than 2, and when you are uh, outside this part, your decay is greater than 2. Okay, so uh, to, test, uh, this, uh, to test this decay, we can, uh, we, can, we can try some numerical experiments. So here I have a, a, quite a, a phase map. And uh, you have alpha here, you have p here, and you can, uh, you can run an STROF algorithm. And on the right, I have the, um, the trajectory of the STROF rate, but I multiply by the rate given by the theorems, such that you have always a bounded function here. Okay, so if, if you consider a flag function here, you can see that the, the, uh, the, the, the trajectory is, uh, is bounded. You have no oscillations here, for example. In this situation here, you have uh, oscillations, but the, the, the rates we compute correspond exactly to the, to the reality here because your, function, your, your uh, curve on the right is bounded but not goes to uh, infinity. Okay, but if you choose a smaller value of, uh, uh, of alpha, uh, you have num some numerical uh, uh, instability, so you have to reduce the this, this step, but uh, you also have uh, an optimal rate, and the trajectory is uh, also bounded, but not decreasing to zero. That means that the, the, the rate we gave are exactly the one you can observe uh, you can observe if you do some numerical uh, experiments. Okay, so the first theorem consider, uh, uh, is, uh, um, is applying to a small value of uh, alpha. So if we suppose that f satisfies the condition uh, h of uh, gamma for any gamma, so if it's flat enough, it's more flat than x to the power gamma, then if alpha is smaller than 1 over 2 over gamma, the decay rate is uh, uh, this one, okay, and if alpha is greater than 1 plus 2 over gamma, uh, you, uh, you have a decay that is at least 1, uh, one over n squared. Um, so if he, you, don't you don't need here to have uh, a Lojasevich property to guarantee the, 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 the convergence rate of your functional. It's a flatness uh, property. The more your function is flat, for small value of alpha, the better the rate is. That is quite strange, right? yeah, because it's not the case for gradient descent. For the gradient descent, you need to be sharp. Yeah. For Nesterov, for, for, for small value of alpha, you, your function needs to be flat if you want to go fast. Okay, so this theorem corresponds to uh, this part here, uh, the green part. Uh, domain, and you don't need any assumption on the uniqueness of the minimizer here. You don't need to be uh, sharp, you don't need to have a unique minimizer, you just need to be uh, flat enough. 
Okay? The second theorem we propose is uh, if f satisfies uh, the condition L of 2, that is, it grows sufficiently fast around the set of minimizers, faster than uh, x squared, and if you have a unique minimizer, you also have the same rate. Uh, it's the same formula, 1 over n to the power 2 gamma alpha divided by gamma plus 2. Um, you can observe that if you consider gamma equal to 1, yeah, your function is not flat at all. It may be absolute value, for example. You recover the, the previous result of Suboid and Candes and Atouche and Cabot, and the decay is 1 over uh, n to the, to the power 2 alpha over 3. But the point is, if you apply these results to um, quadratic functions, for quadratic functions, uh, a quadratic function satisfy L2 and H2. So uh, you, can, uh, you can use uh, gamma equal to 2 and you have a decay that is 1 over n to the power alpha. It means that if you want to minimize uh, uh, a quadratic problem, uh, a mean square problem, for example, with an Esterhoff acceleration, the decay will be 1 over n to the power alpha. Whatever alpha you take, you can take alpha equal to 10, equal to 20. Okay. We know that it is uh, the same problem. Is, uh, it's faster for, uh, uh, for gradient descent, because for gradient descent, it is a geometrical decay. But for uh, Nesterov, this, this Nesterov scheme, you have a decay that is polynomial in 1 over n to the power um, alpha. And you can also uh, notice that uh, for any functions that satisfy L, uh, L of 2 and uh, whose gradient is Lipschitz, uh, the decay is always better than 2 alpha over 3, which, is, which was the bound given by Candes and uh, uh, Atouche uh, and Cabot. So this uh, second uh, theorem uh, deals with uh, the orange part here. Okay, you say, you know, it's uh, 2 alpha over 3. The, the slope here is 2 alpha over 3 for p equal to 1. Yeah, the, the, and uh, uh, on the other boundary is, uh, corresponds to p equal to 2, and the, the slope is uh, uh, rate equal to alpha okay, for quadratic function. This, uh, this applies to quadratic function. Okay, and we have a, a third theorem uh, concerning the flat functions. And for flat functions, I mean, uh, we'll suppose that the function satisfy h of gamma and l of gamma for gamma strictly uh, greater than 2. Uh, and if f, f has a unique minimizer and if alpha is greater enough, you can recover a, a rate that is 1 over, it's not the same here, it's 1 over n to the power 2 gamma over gamma minus 2. And you can compare this rate to the rate you can achieve with a classical gradient descent, and the rate you can achieve with classical gradient descent is gamma over gamma minus 2. So for this kind of functions, uh, Nesterov seems to be uh, faster. If you choose alpha greater enough, uh, great, uh, high, high enough, uh, you, you can achieve a, a decay that is better than the one you can achieve with classical gradient descent. And this third th theorem is linked to uh, this blue part, concerning this blue part here. And it, it explains the actual decay. Oh, yeah. I should have... Uh, uh, I'm sorry for the headache. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, it's a blue part. Okay, here. So all the points of the phase map p alpha concerning by this theorem are in this in this blue uh, uh, in this blue part of the uh, phase map. Okay, and uh, now we can see in two D uh, what happened. Uh, let's consider, for example. Uh, you have this, uh, so on the left, you, you have the rate in color depending on alpha and p, okay? And on the right, you have uh, a graphic uh, where you have the, a slice of the rate uh, for a, a given value of p, okay? Now, for example, if we consider p equal to 1, we want to minimize absolute value of x. Now, if we want to minimize absolute value of x, we have a decay that is 2 alpha over 3. 
depending on alpha. So you have to, uh, if you want a good decay, you must, you can choose a very high value of alpha. Here I also give, uh, also give the, the optimal rate given for any convex function. For any convex function, not x to the power p, but for any convex function, if you choose alpha greater than three, you have, also, you have at least a rate greater than two, and if your alpha is smaller than three, you also have a rate that is uh, two alpha over three. Okay, and uh, what we see that for small value of p, p equal to one, this decay is two alpha over three, if I go to p equal to 2, so a square function, for a square function, uh, the decay is, uh, is uh, faster. And if I choose uh, any value for p equal to 4, for example, you have a better decay for a small value of alpha, but you have a limit here uh, for, uh, for the decay. And if you consider f more, even more flat functions, if you have even more flat functions, the decay tends to 2 which is the optimal uh, rate you can achieve for any uh, convex function. Okay, and what is more strange, it's the same, uh, the same uh, image, but now you choose, uh, you, you try to, to uh, see the decay depending on alpha. Okay, so I fix alpha and I try to, to see what is the decay for the different functions x to the power p. So Nesterov told, uh, tell us, tells us that if you choose alpha equal to three that is here, your rate is at least two. That is true, okay. For any function p here, uh, the, the rate is greater than two. And the point is, you know, this curve I is not uh, increasing or decreasing, and the maximum value is uh, p equal to four. Okay, that means it, it means that if you choose Nesterov scheme with alpha equal to three, the function we will decay the faster. It's not x squared; it's x to the power four. But it's quite strange. Yeah, you know, uh, it was uh, quite a surprise. And um, if you move the value of alpha, the decay will uh, try to will grow. Okay, and you have a, a sort of wave here. And for alpha equal to uh, to eight, so you have a uh, this kind of decay. And you can observe that this function is not, uh, is not decaying. And it's uh, increase, then, decay, uh, then uh, this function decays, uh, the rate depending of p. It means that you can't achieve this rate using only your Lojasevich property. Okay, if you use only uh, uh, conditions on your theorems that uh, bound the, the growth condition, the sharpness of your function, you can't achieve this, this, uh, this rate. Because if you control only the sharpness of your function, you will always have the rate that you have in, for p equal to one. Because the absolute value of p satisfies any uh, Lojasevich property for convex functions, okay? So if you want to, to propose uh, uh, optimal theorems, you, you need two assumptions. One that controls the sharpness, and one that controls the, the, the flatness of the function. Uh, so, yeah, it's quite small here. It's a, uh, uh, a takeaway message, we'll see, uh, we'll say. Um, so, uh, the phase map with uh, three theorems here, it's uh, in the blue part, it's uh, flat functions, and you have this decay uh, for alpha uh, uh, high enough. Here, for small values of alpha, uh, you have uh, this decay. You don't need, you do not need uniqueness of the minimizer here. You need it here, and you need it here also. And uh, in this part, uh, you also have this uh, famous rate, uh, one over two, one over n to the power uh, two alpha p over p uh, plus two. Okay, so how can we uh, achieve uh, this rate? Uh, we make the link between the, uh, some OD and the Nesterov scheme. You can see the Nesterov scheme as a discretization scheme of an OD. Okay, and this OD, uh, second order OD, uh, and the parameter alpha is the same that in the Nesterov scheme. Yes, you have alpha there, you have alpha there, and you can, uh, this, this uh, alpha is linked to a, a viscosity term in this, uh, um, in this OD, and uh, you can compute, can do all your computations 
on the OD and the solution of the OD. So I give an example. Uh, if you consider th this OD and you, and you uh, assume that alpha is greater than 3, you have some decay over the value of the functional that is 1 over t, uh, t square, and you have the same decay uh, 1 over n square for the, uh, the, for the classical, uh, uh, for the Nesterov algorithm. So you can derive some results in a continuous setting, and with the, using an appropriate discretization of the functionals, you can derive so, some results on the, on the discrete scheme. Uh, I don't tell you any details about what kind of functions we, what kind of uh, uh, proof we can use uh, in the continuous setting. We will use a, a classical Lyap Lyapunov analysis with uh, functions uh, that are made of uh, some uh, uh, energies with uh, something like kinetic energies and uh, uh, for some terms, uh, you have uh, x dot here and some potential energies. You sum it, you choose some parameters, and you choose them uh, uh, in a suitable way depending on the assumption you have uh, on your functions. And you can bound the energy, and bounding the energy, you can bound the value of the function. Okay, and when we go, we want to go back to the discrete setting, we define some Lyapunov sequences. Uh, that are somehow some discretization of the Lyapunov functions. Uh, we need to control uh, the discretization terms, which is not very easy. And one main difficulty is we want to have some results that are um, available when the step size does not go to zero. So we want some results where the step size is smaller than 1 over L, where L is a Lipschitz constant of the gradient of the F. And it's not so uh, obvious that you can achieve some results from continuous to the discrete without assuming that the step goes to zero. But it's sometimes possible, and uh, in this case, it's possible to do it. And just to end, I uh, want to show you this is uh, show you again this uh, this problem. So uh, I, s I just said that the blue curve corresponds to uh, uh, ISTA, iterative soft solving algorithm, forward backward. And it was proved by, uh, uh, so to solve uh, this problem, and the red curve is, uh, is uh, FISTA, so Nesterov. Okay. And the point is, um, uh, you can prove that uh, it's a result of Bolt, uh, Jerome Bolt and the co-authors, that uh, the forward backward has an exponential decay. So the blue curve is an exponential decay. And you can, prove, you, you can prove using similar arguments that if you use FISTA on the lasso and you, you have to assume that the solution is unique, you have a decay of, of FISTA in 1 over n to the power 2 alpha over 3. That means that the decay on the blue curve is exponential and the decay of the, green, of the red curve is only polynomial. But the point is, uh, what, are, what are the constants? And we, I present you a first work about uh, the asymptotic. Okay, it's an interesting point. We think so, uh, uh, almost. But uh, this, uh, a future work will be to understand what are really the, the rate and what are the, the constants here. So I would thank to my co-authors, uh, Marc Bernot, who helped me to, uh, for these images and uh, animations. And thank you for your attention. Thank you again. I was impressed by your slides <laughs> and your presentation. Is there any question? So thanks, Charles, for the presentation. Um, so now we have a lot of uh, results, a lot of rates depending on many conditions. It seems that the results are quite satisfying when the function are flat. Uh, somehow you show that when the function is very flat and you take um, alpha being small, uh, you're getting rates which are equal to the one of the gradient descent, but to the square? Yeah, for large value of alpha. Ah, large value. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, my question was uh, concerning, like, let's say, the quadratic case. Yeah. Not strongly convex function, but let's say gamma equal to 2. Yeah. Uh, in that case, you have that when alpha goes to infinity, let's say you can get arbitrarily good rates. Yeah, and Unique, we know uniqueness of the minimizer. And uniqueness of the minimizer. Yeah. 
Uh, and we know for strongly convex function yeah. that actually you can get exponential rates if you take uh, an inertial parameter which is constant. So let's yeah. say an alpha which is along the algorithm growing like something proportional to t, let's say. Uh, but this is true as far as I know only for strongly convex function. Uh, do you think you could uh, get the same results by assuming the function being not only strongly convex but being like h2 and l2? No, 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 no. If you have a uh, uh, you, I, I think you can't achieve exponential decay with this scheme. When the parameter here uh, at the beginning, no, well, here we have it. Yeah, the the, the parameter n over n plus alpha here, this uh, this point, this uh, alpha n. When it goes to one, I think you can't get exponential rate. When this uh, this value go goes, what to I'm one. saying is to replace n, n over n plus alpha by just a constant which doesn't depend on n. Yeah, if you if you have a, a constant here, uh, you have an exponential decay. Yeah. For strongly, but only uh, also for quadratic but non strongly convex functions. Uh, for quadratic, uh, quadratic. I, I mean yeah, h two yeah. and l two, let's say. Ah no no, it's not quadratic. That's my question. Okay uh, okay, uh, for l two and h two. Uh, uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I, actually, there's no. Uh, if you don't have any uniqueness of the minimizers, uh, it's quite a problem. It's not a problem for quadratic function, but for quadratic function, yeah, even you if you have no, if you have no uniqueness, that's not a problem because uh, it's, a gen it's it's not a problem. But if you only know that your function satisfy L2 and H2, you don't have uniqueness. We have nothing. Okay. But you seem to be very annoyed by this uniqueness, but is it from, let's say, a technical point of view, or do we have contraexamples where non-uniqueness kills, let's no, say, I have the no, rates? I have no examples. Okay. Yeah. It seems to be technical, but uh, when you do the proof, you need it. Yeah. <laughs> One more question. Results that you have given for the scalar case, uh, extension to more than one variable is still valid? Yeah, uh, the, the theorems are valid in any dimensions. Any dimensions, okay. Okay, uh, uh, the, these rates are shown to be optimal. Uh, you, you, can, you can see that, this, this, you can observe that these rates are optimal for the function uh, uh, norm of x to the power p in any dimension. Any dimension. Okay. Are there bad things hidden in the big O? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, very bad things. Yeah. yeah. If there are no bad things uh, hidden in the big O, you can choose alpha equal to 100 and 1000, and it will be wonderful. Okay? In practice, we didn't do that because the, the, the constant hidden in the big O grows exponentially uh, in uh, some parameters. Uh, yeah. But you have a, an exponential growth uh, of, of the constant hidden is a big O when you take too large alpha. Yeah, of course. <laughs> There's no free lunch, you know. <laughs> For the, I, I, I've got the color of the part, so when you uh, require arrow as arrow has to have uh, gamma at least to be two, and <laughs> h could be any p less than two, but h yeah. p uh, for p less than two, but uh, uh, you have l two at least. Yeah, l two, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. could you relax the l two to l gamma somehow for gamma less than two? If, uh, what, excuse me. So could you replace l two by l gamma for any gamma? For the same gamma, h gamma, for the same gamma with h. Oh, but gamma here is uh, necessarily uh, smaller than two. Yeah. Okay, if so you if you have L of gamma for gamma smaller than two, you have L of two. Uh, uh, yeah. So I have it, yeah, but it's uh, easier to. Okay, so I propose that we stop here with questions. <laughs> so we thank you again.